Did you know that you can replace the many wires going to your 3D printer's head with just four? Today we try out Clipper support for CAN bus toolboards. This is a video I've had quite a few requests for from patrons and viewers alike. I finally got around to it and I have to say it was fairly complicated, so hopefully this video can be helpful. I need to give a big thank you to my patron Derek, currently undertaking this same modification for all of his assistance in preparing this video. Let's jump right in by asking the question, what is a CAN bus? A CAN bus is something normally seen in cars. And the important parts of this definition is that it's a message-based protocol and it allows us to save on copper because it reduces the amount of wires required. In a car, we can reduce a thick loom down to only a handful of wires. Let's have a look at how this works on my target printer, the CR10 Max. The wiring from the print head on this machine goes through this fat ribbon cable to a breakout board where individual components connect. If we were to represent this in a diagram, it would look as follows. We've got our fans, heater cartridge, the mister, BL touch and stepper motor, all with their own sets of wires going back to the main board. My machine has been converted to clipper, so we have a Raspberry Pi calling all the shots and controlling the main board. Even so, all of these components are separate and analog. If we want to turn on the part cooling fan, we send the voltage through those wires, or use a different pair of wires for the heatsink fan, and another set of four for the stepper motor, and so forth. Switching to a CAN bus allows us to ditch all of those wires. The first ingredient is a CAN bus board right near the print head, and then we have a USB to CAN converter that plugs into the Raspberry Pi. Some main boards, such as Big Tree Tech's Octopus, already have CAN bus wires and therefore won't need this USB converter. But the majority of Clipper setups will. Using a CAN bus, we only need four wires, two of them being 24 volts and ground the other two being a pair of communication wires called high and low. Whereas before, the main board sent the signals over the four wires to move the stepper motor, with the CAN bus, the message is a digital instruction, which is received by the CAN bus board, which uses the supplied 24 volts and its inbuilt stepper motor driver to turn the stepper motor. In reality, of course, there's a lot of commands going back and forth all at once through those two communication wires and that's why we can ditch the ribbon cable, instead using four wires in its place. Hopefully that makes sense, so let's move on to the products that we're using. There's many hardware options setting up a CAN bus, but this is what I used. Firstly, we have the Big Tree Tech U2C. This is the USB to CAN converter that we saw in our diagram. For the actual CAN bus board, Big Tree Tech has multiple options. Firstly, the EBB36, intended for hot ends that use a compact extruder. Secondly, the EBB42, intended to drive a full-size NEMA 17 stepper motor for the extruder. Each of these will support thermistors, but if you're using a thermocouple, you'll need to pay extra for the version that supports it. I purchased mine in Australia from 3D Bro, getting the U2C version 1.1 and the EBB42 version 1.0. There's not much to say about the packaging and unboxing of both of these products, only that they both arrived undamaged and they both come with mounting and wiring hardware. The EBB module is basically a mini mainboard, just with the CAN ports built in. Even within Big Tree Tech hardware, there's multiple versions of each, and some of them have different processors. Unfortunately, the documentation is a little bit lacking. Firstly, Clipper has an overview page on using CAN bus with their firmware. It discusses using a USB CAN adapter, some standards for the four wires, and then some generic setup but nothing specific about hardware because there's so many options available. Big Tree Tech has a GitHub for the U2C, but only for versions 1 and 1.1. Normally I would say their user manuals are pretty good, but I found these a bit lacking. For instance, there's no pinout diagram, meaning you'll have to read the underside of the board. I also found these dimensions didn't match my actual board. Big Tree Tech also have a GitHub repo for the EBB, covering versions 1 and 1.1, which have different processes. The documentation here is a little bit better, however for the installation, some crucial steps are missing. That brings us to the work of me to you, who has a pretty streamlined set of instructions for setting up both of these devices, and thanks to Derek for pointing me in this direction. I did have to change some of the steps here to get mine to work, and I'll point out where I deviated along the way. Let's go step by step with installation, starting with mounting. Normally you would mount the EBB module somewhere directly on the print head. 
That's how Derek mounted his EBB36 on the back of an Orbiter extruder. However, I was keen to mount my EBB42 in the place of the original Creality breakout board, which is underneath this metal cover, just behind the X-axis stepper. After several iterations, this is my final design. It adapts to the metal plate in the original location, and also has strain relief built in, with the bonus of the metal cover fitting back over the top. The UTC mainboard needs to fit somewhere near the existing electronics. Even with the ribbon cable removed, there's a lot going on inside this electronics case, but I spied a little gap for it to sit. This adapter, shown here in dark blue, bolts to my existing Pi adapter, and holds the UTC board neatly. I doubt many people are running the same components as me, but I've linked to this document in the description so you can export as needed. Onto the wiring and firmware, firstly the UTC board. Wiring into the UTC is very straightforward. We have 24 volts and ground into the green terminal on the end. I daisy chained this off the main board, and then we have a USB-C cable from the Raspberry Pi to the UTC. For the UTC to function as a USB to CAN converter, we need to install some firmware on it. There's different options, but the one we're using is called Candlelight Firmware. This is open source on GitHub, and Big Tree Tech has their own fork. The Big Tree Tech instructions are lacking, missing the command to download the GitHub repo. So if you follow it as it's written here, it will fail. Therefore, we're following me to use instructions. The only difference being, instead of using the official Candlelight repo, for this step, I substituted the URL for that of the Big Tree Tech fork. Until I made this change, I had errors when I tried to search for the device. To install all of this firmware, you're going to need to connect to your Pi via SSH. And if you don't know what that means, I have a video guide linked. Here, I'm using the client PuTTY, and it's simply a matter of copying from the browser instructions, right-clicking in the PuTTY terminal to paste, and pressing enter to run the command. Once I got to the step of cloning the repo, as mentioned before, I deleted the original URL and used the Big Tree Tech fork instead. All of the other instructions were exactly the same. By following these commands, you will compile the Candlelight firmware right on the Raspberry Pi, but before we flash it to the UTC, we need to prepare the board. To prepare for our upload, we need to put it in DFU mode by disconnecting the cable, holding the boot button, and then reinserting the USB cable. We'll notice there's now a blue light on. We run a command to check for DFU devices, and assuming yours is found, you can then copy and execute the next command, which will flash the candlelight firmware to the UTC board. This takes somewhere around a minute, and once it's successful, we need to power cycle the UTC by pulling the cable and reinserting it again. This time, we only want the green light on. Our next command set up the Pi for CAN communication. By running the first line, we'll create a blank file, to which we can then copy and paste the contents that are listed. However, I had trouble until I scrolled to the bottom and used the variation listed for the advanced version. I'd also recommend that if you're planning to use the inbuilt accelerometer, you're better off upping the speed from 250,000 up to 500,000 or even 1 million. Once we're done, we can go to Control X, press yes to save, and then power cycle the Pi. If you've been successful, after rebooting and reconnecting, you can run the CAN bus query from lower down the page with a successful message saying a total of zero UUIDs found. That might seem strange, but remember our EBB board is not connected yet. Think of it like a telephone line installed, but no one connected on the other end. Moving on to the wiring and firmware for the EBB toolboard. Our wiring to begin with is temporary, with us unplugging the USB-C cable from the UTC and plugging in the EBB board in its place. However, you'll notice there's no LED to indicate power on, so we need to install the supplied jumper next to the USB port, and now we'll see the red power LED. Again, we need to put this in DFU mode, like before, we disconnect, hold down boot, and then reapply power, except this time, there's no second status LED to confirm. You might have guessed it, but like all of the other components, we also need clipper firmware installed on the EBB board. Again, we're following me to use instructions with some modifications. My board is an EBB42 rather than a 36, and because I'm using a version 1, that means I have a different MCU and I need to change some values. Our first steps are to install a bootloader on the EBB board. This is optional but recommended because it makes future Clipper updates easy. The bootloader is called CanBoot. We use the Pi to clone it from GitHub and then set it up for our board. 
If you've got a 1.1, you can put in the settings exactly as they're shown on the left. However, I have the older version 1.0, so I needed to select a different MCU. And for this, I referenced the version one manual from Big Tree Tech on GitHub, which also confirmed that in my case, the communication interface was CAN bus on PB8 and PB9. With these settings saved, we then compile the bootloader and copy and paste the command to flash the bootloader to our EBB board. Before we flash the actual clipper firmware, we need to connect our EBB board using CAN configuration. So that means plugging back into the Pi, our UTC board to act as a CAN adapter, and then plugging in a set of wires to act as the high and low between the two boards. I just used jumper wires and twisted them around each other. But now we can still power the EBB board via USB with a wall adapter. There's a header on the board labeled 120 ohms, and we should use the supplied jumper to connect it. Back to our instructions, and we're now going to enter the Clipper directory and run make menu config just like when we originally installed Clipper. Most of the settings I could take from the guide, except once again, I had to substitute my processor model and once again set the communication interface to CAN bus on PB8 and PB9. My last change was keeping my 1 million bit rate to match what I set earlier. We enter the commands to compile the firmware with our settings and once that's successful, we're going to flash Clipper via the bootloader we just installed. The first command will tell us the CAN address and give us a unique UUID for that. We then copy and paste the second command and delete this end placeholder and instead copy and paste our unique UUID before hitting enter, which will flash Clipper onto the EBB board through the CAN wiring. Once it's done and successful, we need to power cycle everything, but before we do, we want to copy that unique UUID, come to our Clipper configuration file and add a new MCU, in my case, simply calling it EBB. The line under this will then paste in our UUID and before it, copy and paste the line from the very end of the instructions. When finished, it should look like this, except your UUID will be unique to you. After saving your configuration, you can power cycle the Pi and in the system loads, you should see your EBB board listed, which means you know it's connected to the Pi successfully via CAN. We are getting closer. Next, we'll make the final umbilical cord and update the pins in our printer configuration. Let's move on from our temporary wiring and make the CAN cable for real. For the 24 volts and ground, I used some power cable that could easily handle the current, crimped on the supplied connectors, before double checking the output with a multimeter, marking it with a Sharpie, and inserting the pins into the connector to match. Please be aware that the two ends are mirrored rather than matching, so make sure you don't plug them in the wrong way. The two communication wires should be a twisted pair with 120 ohms of impedance. We've already covered the impedance by using the jumper on the board, so for high speed twisted wire for communication, I followed Derek's advice and ran some ethernet cable. I was able to crimp on more of the supplied connectors and once again insert the pins into the plastic housing. Also, don't forget to remove that USB jumper now that we're powering the EBB from 24 volts. Now it's time to plug in all of our print head components into the EBB board. If your original loom goes all the way back to the main board, you're going to have to cut it short and crimp on connectors to match the new board. If you want to learn all about crimping for 3D printers, I've got a video linked on just that. In my case, there was already a breakout board, so many of my components plugged straight in. Others, however, like the BL Touch, I had to extend and or crimp on the correct connectors. Eventually, you should be able to plug in all of your components ready for the next step. Back in the printer configuration, where we previously set up our second MCU called EBB. We need to change the pins in our configuration to suit the EBB board, and we have two resources for this. The first is the pinout diagram in the manual, and the second is a sample configuration file on GitHub that again lists all of the pins but in context. As an example, let's update my heater pin, previously connected to the Creality mainboard. We add the name of our second MCU followed by a colon, in my case EBB, followed by the pin name from the docs we were just looking at. For the heater, PB1. I then add a comment and retain my old pin name just in case I need it as a reference. And that's it, for everything you've connected, you go through and add in the new pin. And if you need to invert the direction, the exclamation mark goes before the EBB, not just before the pin name. If you don't have it already, you'll also have to add a 2209 section for the extruder, within which you can configure the TMC settings. 
In my case, freeing up some original mainboard pins meant I could ditch some of my relays that I was using to run electronics cooling fans. Unfortunately, the X-Stepper motor also ran through the original ribbon cable, so I had to make up an additional four wire cable, which I ran up to the gantry wrapped up along with the CAN bus wires. I also designed and printed some small cable management parts. It's also worth noting that if you've added the tool board to your print head, this change in mass will require retuning of input shaping. And that should be all you need to get printing, unless like me, you have some troubleshooting to do. The first time I went to home the printer, as soon as X started moving, motion halted, giving a communication timeout. Googling this gave a lot of results and most of them were linked to having multi MCUs like we have here. Thinking the CAN bus was breaking down, I checked the logs and immediately before the error, I could see the stats for the EBB tool board. And everything looked good. We can see our bytes retransmitted was zero and our invalid bytes were zero as well, telling us that the connection to the CAN bus was solid. I also slowed down the homing as recommended by the Clipper multi MCU homing and probing page. But the solution was this one posted by Boxy, increasing the timeout during homing. Back in SSH, if we run sudo nano and then paste in the address listed, we'll open up a file where we then scroll down and find the trsync underscore timeout value. Now we simply change this from 0.025 to 0.050. Exit and save the file, restart Clipper, and your printer should now hopefully be able to home and probe without any issues. But then during my first print, I had a thermal runaway error. I tried to PID auto-tune, but performance was really sluggish and the process was interrupted by the same error. It turns out the thermistor was under reading by almost 100 degrees. But as far as I know, it was nothing to do with the new tool board and simply a coincidence, because when I changed the thermistor, heating performance returned to normal and I was able to successfully PID auto-tune and of course, print. One more thing, if Clipper releases an update that requires the EBB toolboard to be updated too, you'll compile the Clipper firmware for the toolboard same as before, but the Pi won't be able to see the CAN boot bootloader until we disconnect and reconnect the EBB toolboard, which will temporarily break its communication with Clipper, making it available to flash via the CAN boot bootloader. This modification is not for the faint-hearted, and it doesn't help that there's so many variations in hardware and software. What's in this video is what worked for me, and I am pleased with the results, especially ditching this ribbon cable. Thanks to me to you for their concise guides, and a big thank you once again to my patron Derek for all of his help with this video. Let me know in the comment section if you think CAN bus is the future for 3D printing. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.